Greetings in the name of the Lord. Amen. Greetings on the other side of a successful inauguration event. Without violence, without craziness happening in our world. My goodness, it seems like we all have an opportunity to move on and experience some better things. Isaiah, the 55th chap 54th chapter, verses 2 and 3, and then verse 10. These verses will be highlighted in order to bring forth a word. Though these verses speak about a literal, physical thing, I want us to read it and think about it in terms of a mental thing. I'll explain it as I preach it. Isaiah 54, 2 through 3, and then verse 10. Enlarge the place of your tent, and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Hold nothing back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will break forth on the right and on the left. And your descendants will possess the nations and will inhabit the desolate cities. When it talks about enlarging your tent, enlarge your mind. Enlarge your ability to understand and comprehend, for the Lord is about to do some things in a new atmosphere. Then verse 10, for the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love, says the Lord, shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed. Let's have more than a notion to experience some great things. Let's have more than a notion to experience some great things. During the month of January each year, a great number of people have a notion, have an idea, have a thought to do better in all of their categories or in a few isolated few. This notion or intent to do a few things well in a brand new year is often made and call a resolution. However, if the goal of a resolution is to experience a desired result, then the approach for making it happen would flow better if and when the Lord is invited to be involved in whatever you resolve to improve. Without him to lead, without him to guide all of your efforts through the foggy unknown of this unusual year to actually do what is resolved, then all of this resolution business becomes a mute point. There is a riddle that I read, but I wanted to change it a bit and improvise and ask a question at the end of the riddle. And when I ask the question, the answer really is tied up in the question. And I'm sure you will hear and understand why I'm driving at this particular message during mid-January. Two people sat on a park bench near a picturesque location with tall trees and flowing streams nearby. 
One had a desire to expand their territory and experience more than the same thing they experienced last year again and again and again. One had a desire to make something happen differently than it happened last year. This one probably heard the Lord say to Israel back in the day, you have traveled around this mountain long enough, go to the north. And to put it in regular terms that we deal with now, you have traveled around this COVID-19 mountain full of virus fears long enough. You have traveled through the foggy times of political chaos long enough. You've traveled around this mountain of economic strain long enough Time to move along the path that I will show you. And if you move along that path, says the Lord, it will make a difference. Develop the notion, develop the thought to go forward into another experience that's different from last year. The atmosphere has been set. The atmosphere is now there so that we can even think that such a thing is possible to have a different experience. You can have a notion to have some different experiences because the atmosphere is set so that it can happen. That one person sitting on the bench had all that going on in their mind. The other person wasn't so eager to take the calculated risks needed to get beyond just maintaining the status quo. The other person wasn't willing to take the risks of doing the things that seemed to be the beginning of a solution. The other person, if I want to put it in today's times, had vaccination hesitation. And said, I let everybody else uh, take a Pfizer or Moderna, you know, shot. I let everybody else uh, take the other two that's coming down the pipeline. Everybody's in a hurry to do that. I have vaccination hesitation. I'm not in a hurry to do the things that could make a difference. So this person made no mental resolution to seek any expansion on their horizon. And there are other ways in which you can have a thought to do something to improve your life, and you might not be eager to try it. I'm just happy just being alive. I am happy being alive, but I want to live better. I want to do more than just survive. I want to thrive. And it's time to be able to do some things to go on and start thriving. So here is the answer to the riddle, and it's wrapped up in one question. It says so much to us today. If one person took a notion to get moving, how many people are left on the bench? Two, because one took a notion to get going and expand their territory of their experience. He took a notion, but that's all that was ever done. That one had a great January idea, but that was the extent of it. That person had what I call Notion without motion. I got a good thought. It sounds good. I can call some people up and uh, dazzle their minds with my intellectual thought about what I plan to do. But if you don't act upon it, it's nothing but notion without motion. And so it is with many people throughout the world during this season in January 2021 
as we wish for better days, as we pray for better days, as we ask the Lord to show us how we can have better days ahead. It's easy to take a notion to act upon a self-directed thought. It's easy to take a notion to act upon a godly inspired action. However, more often than not, many a notion stalls out and is slow to translate into an action oriented motion. I believe the writer of the epistle called James nailed it already. In chapter 2, verse 17, he identified the blessing robbing problem of having a notion only without the power of emotion behind the thought. To act on it and make it become manifested into your uh, reality. Faith without works is dead. You know, faith, which is a substance of all things hoped for, does nothing until some kind of spirit-led action is set in motion that shows the evidence of things unseen. So whatever notion that we believe uh, we have been given, whatever notion we want to have on the other side, uh, yeah, of uh, the election results, whatever notion we want to have, uh, let's have some emotion behind the notion to put it into motion. Oh, I'm having a good time with these words. If you have a notion, a thought, nothing happens unless you got a feeling behind the thought. It's the feeling behind the thought that gives you the power to put it into motion. A, 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 a notion without the emotion to act upon it and put it into motion makes things just sort of stand still and not get moving at all. But I know uh, I have a thought for all of us. Let us not be stuck with the problem of notion without any motion. Let us not be stuck with the thought of an idea without a feeling to cause us to act upon it and get moving. I could call it, uh, let us not have notion without feeling an emotion to cause locomotion. If I start locomoting, that means I'm moving on what I had a notion to change. So let us act on God's notion that is designed to place us in a position mentally to experience in real terms the notion God intends to put into motion for us in the here and the now. I can stop right there because the Lord has a notion he's ready to put into motion for you, 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 and all of us. The Lord has a notion that in 2021, I have a blessing I'm going to bring you. I'm ready to put it into motion. I got a notion, but it requires us to do some things as well. We have to believe in the Lord and go on and act on the notion, whatever he's saying do, especially if we know that it's coming from him, we need to be able to go on and get busy doing it. This text focuses on God's encouragement to his people, his encouragement for them to prepare for his continued blessings of epic proportions in a short time that's just beyond their fingertips. Though their past few experiences represent a very low point in the great scheme of things. I can stop right there. Though last year might have represented a low point in the great scheme of things. The Lord's word spoken through Isaiah was a call to act by faith in a new set of circumstances. 
though what he was talking about hadn't happened yet, his word was a call to act and set things up for something that wasn't spoken to happen that would be pleasantly different. Though it hasn't happened yet, go on and set things up. Maybe you're still trying to get uh, your economics back in order. And as more and more people stop having vaccination hesitation and go on and get vaccinated, we might have hope that we might be able to go back to work a little bit, you know. We might be able to go hang around some people a little bit, you know. But it might not have happened yet, but go on and get things ready for things to start changing and getting better. That's why I call this a mental uh, activity. Go on and get ready for it. Lord, I don't see it. That's all right. Get ready for it. How do I get ready for it? Enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge it? I got enough room now. But what the Lord is about to send, you need a bigger tent. And instead of living in a tent, I'm talking about your mind. Enlarge uh, the place of your tent. Enlarge your mentality to be able to accept the reality that the Lord can bring even as this COVID-19 epidemic is still running its course, but there are signs all over the place that we are going to get a handle on it sooner than later. Expand the place of your tent. Believe somehow that the change that has taken place got a new number now, 46. That might set it up so that you can enlarge the place of your tent. You can think differently. You can have a hope now that things might change, uh, and it will change, because the Lord's been working on it all the time. So enlarge your tent. Stretch your curtains wide. About to bring a busload of something you got to have room for. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cause and strengthen your stakes. In other words, I gather from Isaiah's reading that God uh, has put in motion his notion to expand our territory. It's already been put in the notion. We hadn't seen it yet, but going to get ready, prepare for it. Spread to the right and spread out to the left because the Lord... Even your descendants will move into some other nationalities where they were. Move them out of the way and settle in some desolate cities. In other words, a whole lot of things have been moved. A whole lot of people are no longer in position. But you know, if you're following the Lord, because of him, he's ready to move his people into some different positions that didn't exist prior to this whole situation. So enlarge the place of your tent by believing that with God all things are possible. Enlarge the place of your tent by expanding your mind to make big room to accommodate the bigness of the Lord's notion locomotion. What the Lord has a notion to do, it's already on the way. He doesn't just have a notion that can be stalled by anything or anyone. Notion of locomotion, it's already on the move. God is bigger than the limitation of small thinking and minuscule expectations. So enlarge your capacity to experience more of what the unlimited hand of the Lord has a notion to set into motion for you. Right. And we got to make, make sure that we exercise some care in choosing the places for expanding your tent and extending your cause and strengthening your stakes. Choose your locations well in terms of how you think and how you let your mind expand into different things. Even sp the spiritually strong 
word believers among us can inadvertently pitch tents in what was thought to be a good place, and it ends up being among an ill-advised crowd. Show you what I'm talking about as I conclude this word. During their journey through the years, in search of the land God would reveal, Abraham and Lot had to make a decision as to where to pitch their tent. Abraham had a notion and put into motion to choose the high country while Lot was dead set on enlarging the place of his tent in the valleys of Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. Lot was a religious and God-focused man, but he put into motion the notion to choose to pitch his tent in the profitable, yet spiritually dangerous city of Sodom. He expanded the place of his tent into the venturesome place and with people who appeared to be right, all right, according to his quick estimation. However, once he pitched his tent, and stayed there a while. Right. Once he started hanging around the folk he decided to be with for a while, uh -huh. time proved that he was in the wrong place yeah. and among ill-advised people who had no spiritual convictions uh, at all. all right. Though a person who walked with God had the right idea, he somehow got his signals crossed and established himself in the wrong place with the wrong crowd. But even then, you know what? The Lord's kindness did not depart from him. His turn to the left did not cause God's loving kindness and tender mercy to be revealed. So the Lord knew that Lot was still a part uh, of the blessing crowd. And I like that about the Lord. Uh, even though we may drift to the left and may want to pitch the tent of our understanding uh, in the wrong place, the Lord still uh, knows how to tap us on the shoulder and cause us to turn uh, from the left uh, and come back around uh, to the right. Uh, the Lord decided uh, to get Lot in the right place, uh, and he sent his angels in uh, to give Lot the signal uh, that he was about to, to set things in order with Sodom and uh, Gomorrah. He told Lot to, to go and get your household and, and pull up stakes uh, and pitch the tent of your belief out of a uh, harm's way. I tell you, the Lord has a way to straighten things out, and I'm so glad that I'm watching things unfold as I watch it. Somebody bad things been going on, but I see the hand of the Lord beginning to roll it all back in, and I got a feeling he has a notion that he wants to put into motion. Go on and have your resolutions um, to have a better year. The Lord knows how to make it come out all right. Um, go on and have your notion um, that you will be better off uh, after a while. Um, keep on masking up. Um, keep on being distant from folk. Um, and make sure you go on and take the vaccination uh, when you have a chance. Uh, I got a feeling uh, that things are beginning to come uh, around again. Uh, notion, uh, locomotion, uh, notion, uh, a strong feeling about the thought that you have. Uh, go on and act on it by faith. And the Lord has a way of making things come out a little bit better. Yes, he can.
God's blessings be upon you. Whatever notion you have about this year that's different from last year, make sure that you invite God to get all mixed up in it. And somehow it'll unfold in a way that shows you that he's able to bless even now. God's blessings be upon you. May heaven smile on you, you, and you. It is my excitable joy to invite you into a word of prayer today. My joy is excitable because I sense that people's dispositions are somewhat changed and lifted. And though there's much to do still, there's a glimmer of hope that I think I see in your eyes without literally seeing you. I can feel that you have it. And I know that we can go before the Lord with a sincere word of prayer and let us do that at this time. Wherever you are, Join us in prayer. Lift up your prayers and supplications before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you because we sense your movement in our world in gradual degrees. Let it be that those of us who trust in you can see your salvation can see your answers coming and they're coming stronger and stronger each and every day. We give you praise for that which we sense and it gives us confidence to go on and pray about things still up the road and around the horizon. We ask, O oh Lord, that you certainly expand our territories let it be that we have hope that we don't have to be as distant as we have been all of last year. Maybe we can start getting closer as people start getting better and we won't rush that, we won't jump the gun. But Lord, at least we see that things are getting better when it comes to our hope in the world. Let it be that our understanding can be uh, strengthened as well the understanding that maybe people can start working together, maybe people can start de-emphasizing differences, as that seems to be the call for the nation to come together and unite. Let it be that we're able to do the same and have open minds. Let those who hear that message who still have closed minds stop being so resistant and go on and get with the program so that we can make things better for the entire nation and we can do it person by person, group by group. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you for all of the thoughts you have for us to cause us to have renewed hope going forward. We ask your blessings upon us and for the prayers that have been prayed and are being prayed right now, those that are not even being uttered by me because I may not know the content of each person's prayer. But Lord, you know the content of everybody's prayer. You know what's in everybody's heart through your omniscience, your all-knowing. You're with all of us at once, walking with us and talking with us during each mile of the journey. Hear us and bless us is our prayer, for we pray and ask it in the strong and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we have our benediction, I want to say once again that we are very excited that we are operating virtually in a higher level, a higher degrees. We have our Bible study on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and uh, we've done it a couple of weeks and it's going well. And the virtual Sunday school at 10 o'clock on Sundays. And those classes are up and running and if you want more information about these particular classes and how you can access them, you can find that information at the church's website, greenviewfirstbaptistchurch.org. And also, um, for those of you who want to see the entire experience that we are broadcasting virtually, 
we invite you to our church website so that you can receive the whole message as we have had it. Um, but the singing of the choirs and all of that is all on our church website along with the message. So if you want to get all of that, please hasten to the Greenview First Baptist Church website dot org. God bless and be upon you. May heaven continue to smile upon all of you. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the continuation of our 2021 experience during mid-January. Let it be, O oh Lord, that we're closer to the end of it, but we ask that you cause the notions that we want to put in motion to come on and be back into our mind. We were distracted by the craziness that took place, and we want to get back on track with those things we intend to see happen. We know that it is possible because you can enlarge our tent of understanding, and we can expect great things to come from your hand. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your ever-abiding presence is our prayer. For we pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God's blessings be upon you. See you next time, virtually or driving by or at a store somewhere. I'll wave at you. Amen. Thank you, Lord.